the second part of his question was, um, should Mike Behe and I get together and design a class? Mike wouldn't go for that because Mike believes that intelligent design is a valid scientific alternative to evolution and he and the other intelligent design proponents want it in science class. I am perfectly happy with intelligent design and any other religious view being taught comparatively. In fact, I'd like that. I'm an anthropologist. I think comparative religion is great. It's fascinating. It's wonderful. I have often said that the American population is scientifically illiterate and theologically illiterate as well. We need more understanding of religion, its place in human culture, society. Comparative religion would be a great topic and origin stories should be part of that. The intelligent design people aren't going to go for that because they believe they have a true, a true science. My feeling is if intelligent design is a real science, prove it. The burden of proof is on them. Come to the conferences. Make, give presentations, have posters, make your argument to the biochemists and the cell biologists and the paleontologists. Don't make it in the op-ed in the local newspaper. No, make it to the scientists. And if, if intelligent design is a better way of understanding nature, hey, we'll, ju we'll, get it. we'll jump on that bandwagon. Science is very competitive. If you've got a better way of understanding nature, you know, you've got a train coming right away. They have to make that case. If they do, then they'll trickle down to high school. They haven't done that yet. The question was, should scientists become more involved in this issue, for example, in a local level, on a state level? Yeah. <laughs> um, the history of NCSE actually um, re exactly reflects that. NCSE got started in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, when all of these equal time for creation science bills were being brought into the state legislatures around the country. And scientists and teachers uh, banded together in communities and in states to go up and testify against those bills and try to keep them from getting passed. And uh, a network of people doing this uh, evolved from the grassroots. And it was clear that an organization to kind of coordinate these groups would be very helpful. For one reason is that once the Nebraska bill didn't get out of committee, the Nebraska scientists went home and they went back to their day jobs and you know we never heard from them again. So that's how NCSE got organized. This, this was to be the coordinating group for these local grassroots uh, groups that actually did the work. And that's the model we still follow. We support local groups like the Dover parents or um, like the parents in El Tejon who sued uh, the district to stop the course. We give them the information in science and religion and law and the other areas so that they can carry the fight. And scientists are a very important part of that coalition. We do put together coalitions because this is not just a scientific issue. You'll notice in my talk today, I didn't talk just about science. Science is necessary, but it's not sufficient to solve this problem. We have to have good science. We have to be able, as scientists, to stand up and say, no, this is science, this is not science, this is what we should be teaching, this is what we should not be teaching. But then we need to have a clergyman get up and say, I'm with him. Okay? We need a teacher to come up and say, I'm with them. And we believe as teachers, as high school teachers, that we should teach standard science and the scientists tell us to teach this and that's what we want to teach. We don't want to teach this fringe stuff. We need this coalition of teachers, scientists, clergy, civil libertarians, parents. It, it's, it, it takes a village. Um, because the scientists alone can't do it, but we can't do it without the scientists. Are these requests coming from teachers? Yes. Okay, that's very significant. I take it you have a Board of Education in Ann Arbor. The Board of Education is, um, supervises the supervisor, the supervisor supervises the administration. If you can't get the administration to do something, get the board to do it. And if you can't get the board to do it, elect a new board. Well, what would you say to them? You could say to them that um, we teachers believe, and you know, the more of you who, who stand up, are the better. You could say we teachers believe that this controversial issue is generating questions that we would like some help learning the best ways to respond. And we would like to have some in-service on this topic. We are next to one of the finest universities in the country. There are resources here both in the education school as well as in the science departments to help us do that. 
And I would uh, make that point to the board. Uh, may, you know, if you can document that you have approached the administration, the administration has not been responsive, that is more ammunition on your side. And um, of course, the first thing you want to do is work behind the scenes with the board. See if you can, because we work behind the scenes all the time. A whole lot of stuff you never read about in the newspaper. Um, and that's the way we like. We don't like lawsuits. We really don't. I was rubbing my hands with Gull Lake just because it's such a crazy case. But I'm, I, I don't want a lawsuit in Gull Lake. I don't want any more lawsuits. I want these things to be solved behind the scenes. So go talk to the, if you've got a school board member who's likely to support you, go to him or her first and try to work up some enthusiasm on the part of the school board. See if you can get it done without going to the newspapers, without having to go to a school board meeting and do a big public thing. Because you're more likely to get, in general, I don't know the specifics of your district, but in general, you're more likely to get progress along these lines if you do it behind the scenes. But I, I think that's outrageous that they are not responding to teachers like that. We don't have any good national surveys on teacher attitudes or knowledge or understanding or reluctance or enthusiasm for teaching evolution. We have some state surveys, and it's not encouraging. Uh, the NSTA, the National Science Teachers Association, had an online poll, you know, which of course are not scientifically valid. And they said this is not scientifically valid. But basically, those who wrote in, um, whom I actually would imagine would have been the more motivated teachers in a sense, because they read the NSTA website, so these are the more professional ones. But I think if I remember correctly, and if anybody does remember, I'm happy to be corrected, about 20 or 30 percent of the teachers said that they had experienced some form of anti-evolutionism, either from a parent, from a student, or most chilling, from an administrator. And those are the really sad ones. The stories that I hear from teachers, and I, you know, I go to science teacher meetings. We usually exhibit at NABT. I give talks and regularly go to NSTA. And I hear from teachers all the time that, you know, I'm the only one in my school who teaches evolution because our principal doesn't want us to. The question was that he had heard in his peripheral vision, if you can hear in your vision, um, that there were some state science standards that were being tinkered with to allow in supernatural explanation. It's more subtle than that. Um, you probably had heard news reports about the Kansas state science standards, which have historically been very contentious. The good guys won, uh, the bad guys won in 99, the good guys, they, they voted, you know, the, voted the rascals out and the good guys restored the good science standards in 2000. Now they're up for renewal, up for um, 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 uh, revision, and the school board is now majority creation, you know, creation members. Um, what they have done is not write the standards on, in the science as a way of knowing part and, you know, the philosophy of science section of the, of the standards. They didn't rewrite it to say, bring God in, because they, you know, <laughs> the lawyers would be all over them. What they did was very subtle. The way the standards had been written, written is pretty much the way I described science here. Science is a you know, way of explaining the natural world restricted to natural cause. They took out the natural cause part. Okay? Smart. And then publicized it, of course, so that any creationist teacher says, I don't have to restrict my teaching to natural cause now. It's very clever. Um, it's not saying teach creationism but it's opening the door for it. So the idea is that this may be a legally more viable strategy than some of the other possibilities. So yeah, watch, watch Kansas. It's going to be fun. Thank you so much. It was very nice to be here.